Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a video where I was very transparent and very clear to give you guys the very first steps into changing your diet to heal your eczema. So I'm now getting an audience that's coming from both Instagram and YouTube. And the people from YouTube are watching some of my newer videos and not knowing exactly what I'm saying, and the people from Instagram aren't with the flow of YouTube. If you've been here a long time, then you know this by heart. But I wanna just sit down and just explain to you guys what exactly fridge foods are. It's pronounced like fridge, like a refrigerator, because it helps you remember it. And it's the acronym F-R-E-D-G, fridge foods. So basically, this is an acronym that I created to help you guys. It can sometimes be a little bit confusing to try to figure out what's okay and not okay to eat, and I wanted to create just like the main things that you should cut out of your diet to start your healing process. So these foods are very interesting, and I'm gonna go ahead and list them out, and then we're gonna talk about each one, and then we'll talk about the impact of them on your body. So it is fried foods, refined sugar, eggs, dairy, gluten, so let's start with fried foods. So the reason why fried foods are completely off the list of things that you should be eating for eczema is because not only are they fried in inflammatory oils, but sometimes you're getting carcinogens because they're being over fried. Then you can also be getting MSG, which is an addictive substance that also leads to many issues later in life. It also is most likely breaded with gluten. Sometimes you can find fried foods that are breaded with other things, but since gluten is one of the worst, it's just easier to say no to fried foods altogether. Now, way later down the line, you may be able to fry your own food or even use an air fryer, but let's not worry about that right now. So a really common oil for people to use while they're frying things is a vegetable oil, like a canola oil. Uh, canola oil is also called rapeseed oil. There's sunflower oil, safflower oil. All of these oils are in fact inflammatory. They will cause your skin to get so much worse. I've tried it myself, my clients know better. If you've ever tried taking fried foods out and adding them back in, you will see a massive difference. So the next on the list is a little bit more complicated and it's refined sugar. And I really wanted to explain what this is so that you guys can properly avoid it in your diet. So refined sugar means any sugar that has been overly processed. And so the main culprit is white sugar. And so this is really common in a lot of things that you bake with. You'll end up baking with a white sugar or a brown sugar, and both of these are basically the same thing. Brown sugar is actually white sugar and molasses mixed together to create a softer sugar used for other things. And so when you're looking on the back of packages, if you see the word white sugar, if you see the word beet sugar, if you see the word sugar, if you see the word organic sugar, cane sugar, you want to avoid all of those. In addition to that, you want to avoid, like the plague, corn syrup. Corn syrup is so bad for you for so many different reasons. And so the reason is all of these refined sugars, you can actually find a list online. I'll actually pop one up here of other refined sugars that you want to avoid. But the reason why is because not only are they overly processed, for example, white sugar actually goes through a bleaching process to make it become white sugar. Not only this, but there's an actual link between your glycemic index and your eczema, and I don't quite have the research on it, but I've tried it myself. My clients know it's a thing, but it seems like whenever your blood sugar raises, your eczema becomes inflamed. And so, in general, I would really recommend for you guys to have a lower added sugar diet. So if you have to have added sugar, what I highly recommend is monk fruit or stevia. And it's because neither of those will actually raise your blood sugar. So things that are safe for eczema, but not necessarily the best, is you want to go with organic whenever you can. Maple syrup, that's not like Aunt Jemima's syrup for pancakes, but like actual maple syrup from the trees. That's totally fine for eczema. Um, really avoid honey, and that's for many other reasons. Take my word for it. 
You can also sweeten things with agave sometimes, but your best bet is either just avoiding added sugars or using, uh, they're not actually artificial sugars. So stevia and monk fruit do not, they're not considered artificial sugars. They actually come from plants. It's just our bodies don't metabolize them as glucose, which is sugar. Hope you guys followed this. This is more in depth than I've ever gone with this whole sugar topic. You're probably gonna have more questions, but comment down below and I will answer them. The next thing on the list is eggs. I'm a pop graphic right here that I actually made that explains the whole cycle of why eggs are actually pretty damaging to people with eczema. And it's because of the egg whites. So egg whites contain something called lysozyme. And so it's a protein and it helps the chicks like break through the shell. It's a whole thing that works wonderful for the chicks, but not so great for people like us who have very sensitive intestine linings and can easily get leaky gut. And so leaky gut is, another name for it, is intestinal permeability. So leaky gut does not mean that you're having diarrhea, that your bowel movements are irregular. It means that the lining of your intestine has micro holes in it. And these micro holes will let all sorts of toxins into your bloodstream. From there, your immune system says, hey, that's not supposed to be here. They mark it. And then anytime you eat things that have been marked, you're going to have flare-ups. So it's a whole thing. So my best advice is avoid eggs. I'm really thinking about trying to include egg yolks back into my diet because I've been fully healed for a while now and I miss eggs and I miss baking with eggs. And so I'm thinking if I can avoid the egg white and use the egg yolk, but I don't have exact research on this yet. So you guys just avoid eggs in general and tune into like my Instagram because I'm sure if I figure out that I can have egg yolks, I will tell you guys. The next thing on the list is dairy. Dairy is one of the worst things that you can eat for eczema. Again, so this all has to do with leaky gut and lactose, which is a sugar found in dairy products, digs right through your intestine lining and causes havoc everywhere. It is so bad, but it's not as bad as gluten. Gluten is probably the number one thing that just is a doozy to, <laughs> to for lack of a better word it's a doozy it's just so bad for so many reasons but we'll get to that so even dairy that comes from camel goat sheep anything all of those still contain lactose in it it's better because there's another thing going on in dairy called casein and that's a whole nother issue but just know if it has lactose don't consume it then I get a lot of questions if lactase or like Lactaid, which is a milk brand that is lactose free, is okay. No, because it's highly processed. Stay away from it. Please go with something like a cashew yogurt, cashew cheese, cashew milk. Uh, that's my best recommendation for you guys. Just replace your dairy with cashew whatever and make sure that it's not highly processed and make sure it doesn't have the word natural flavors in it. So on to the last one of fridge foods, which is gluten. Gluten is so bad because it, there's a whole issue with wheat. And wheat actually contains something called WGA. I don't have all the science memorized in my brain at this moment, but if you look up w, WGA in relation to wheat and leaky gut, it, so the whole idea is wheat that contains, that is actually quite terrifying and it releases something in your body that starts with an R. I'll put the, the right word here. And it basically says, okay, so in your intestine, you have cells that kind of line up like this and they have what's called gap junctions, which are kind of like connectors between the cells. What wheat does is it tells the body to just like, release the gap junction, like, you're good, just let everyone detach from each other. And it causes, like, the worst leaky gut ever. It's just a massive issue. So, wheat, which is also, um, there's different things off of wheat, and so I'll pop an image here for you guys to look at, but make sure you're avoiding wheat. I mean, get away from those pastas, get away from all that stuff. And in avoiding gluten, 
don't just replace it with gluten-free things. Actually try to source things that are healthy for you. If you're someone that loves pasta, go with kelp noodles. If you're someone that loves pasta, they have lentil noodles that are just one ingredient, which is lentils. And don't just like go to the store and go to the gluten-free section because those things often have refined sugar. They're often fried. They often have inflammatory oils in it. And that's just not something you want to add in. So again, basically what you want to do is instead of opting for gluten-free options all the time, make sure you're really choosing high quality things. Yes, you can probably go out to a pizza place and find a gluten-free vegan crust, and that'll be a really fun treat for the most part. Just make sure you're eating whole foods. It's the best option. If you're not somebody who's interested in purchasing my coaching program or my diet, the best advice I have is switch from processed foods to whole foods and try to help yourself out in that way and eventually it'll end up working. Make sure you're taking care of leaky gut and taking care of your body and you should heal eventually. It's probably going to take a lot longer, but at least it's a start. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video and I know this is going to help because I get so many questions all the time on all of these things. And so I wanted to come on here and really teach you guys exactly what needs to happen so that you can take the first steps to healing your skin naturally. You know, I get some feedback too about, you know, like, oh, I get all these, you know, I've been trying the diet and it doesn't work. I've been doing this and it doesn't work and I'm sick of hearing about the natural method. That's perfectly fine. You can always like, you know, I personally did it myself. I'm completely eczema free now. You know, I didn't use topical steroids or shots. So it's just coming from my personal experience and this is what I can share with you guys because I am a health coach. I have all this knowledge on nutrition and I know how to help you. I don't, however, know how to, like, I don't know that any other method actually works. I've talked to so many people who have used so many methods. Like, I've had clients who've used, like, the UV using, like, light therapy. They said it didn't do anything for them. So, from my experience and my clients' experiences, this is the best that I can do for you guys. And so, I truly, truly help. I truly, truly hope that this is something that I can help guide you through and it's an option for you at least. If it doesn't work for you, go on to another channel maybe and see if anybody has better advice for you. But this is the advice that I have and I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!